Welcome, we'll start with class 11 political science, the second part and the second chapter which talks about the freedom. Now, what is freedom? When we say we are fighting for a struggle against the existing domination that that's there, we say it's freedom. So when, whenever we talk about freedom, there are two major figures that come to our mind, Nelson Mandela and Aung San Suu Kyi. So we'll discuss about both of those and their efforts that have been laid down in the present day. Now when we talk about freedom, the idea is we are trying to help people to get independence out of it and they are able to control their own lives and their own destinies as of they are free to express their thoughts, express their emotions and express their feelings. So that's a kind of very broad outlook when we talk about what is freedom and how do we understand freedom. Now talking about freedom, we try to understand the two important things. First are the social constraints that exist. So removing any kind of social constraints that exist are Secondly is any other kind of restrictions that are there on the common man must be removed. So those are the two things then that we focus under freedom. Now coming on to Nelson Mandela's contribution. Nelson Mandela's contribution is indeed very very important. His autobiography was Long Walk to Freedom and in this he tried to explain the situation of a common black in South Africa in contrast to a American or a kind of white person who is there in South Africa. So the discriminations that were seen on the roadside, discrimination seen in the railways, discrimination seen in housing, in education, in healthcare and each and every sector of life was really really a kind of struggle or the kind of humiliation that a black has to face was expressed under his book of Long Walk to Freedom. He was a kind of staunch believer of uh, uh, kind of sports mainly boxing he was a lover of music but despite of all that he left all this and went to jail to attain freedom for the common people and that was what was explained in his autobiography which was long walk to freedom so he explained the struggle of the black, the idea of apartheid and how they had to struggle to uh, basically gain independence. The next common example that we talk about was Aung San Suu Kyi. Now she remained under a house arrest in Myanmar. She was separated from her children. Uh, her husband was in England fighting with cancer. She was not able to visit because uh, of the fear that if she moves out of the country, she would not be allowed to get into the country. The book she wrote was Freedom from Free Fear and in this book she tried to basically explain how uh, a person needs to be out of the fear and once the person is out of the fear there is freedom that automatically comes to his door. So that's the idea that she tried to propound and therefore the sole motive under the freedom that was given by Aung San Suu Kyi was to get rid of the fear. So once you are out of the fear, freedom is definitely there to, leave, uh, to lead a kind of dignified life. So what so we talked about different definitions given by different scholars and the different perspectives. If we want to summarize this, briefly I can say what is freedom. First of all, there should be no constraint that should be there. So the first thing is there is no constraint. There should not be a, any kind of external control that should be there. And the person should be allowed to make a kind of independent thought process or should have uh, autonomy in his thought process. That's the second important point. So this is something uh, that's internal to a person that's trying to have a kind of independent decision making unit. The next important aspect is not talking about the constraints but talking about the expansion. So it's basically expanding the ability to freely express themselves and that's one of the important ideas of freedom that has been explained and this talks about developing two things creativity and capability. So in the first thing we talked about removing any kind of constraints. In the second go we talked about developing creativity and capabilities. So that was the sole idea that we try to understand under the concept of freedom. Now as we will move forward we will talk about the positive freedom, the negative freedom and the different uh, connotations on freedom. Now let's say there is a child. Now that child is being constantly told by the parent this is right this is wrong so he is able to develop choices 
and based on that choices as he grows older he gets a freedom to understand what is the right part to choose and that's what we try to understand that despite of some of the constraints that are present in the society we try to find out the core relationship and the best way forward to proceed so we have to understand what is desirable what is not desirable and in which, which direction one should proceed the next is if the society is free it would allow an individual to develop onto its full capacity so that's again a very important aspect now we talked about the contribution of nelson mandela we talked about aung san suu kyi if we come back to india you have mahatma gandhi's contribution he talked about the concept of swaraj swa plus raj swa means swa means self and raj means rule so it talks about self rule so self rule is something that was explained by uh, Mahatma Gandhi in his book Hind Swaraj later on Bal Gangadhar Tilak talked about Swaraj is my birth right and I shall have it so those were the kind of uh, movements that were common uh, during the independence uh, movement in India or the nationalist movement in India now the idea that mahatma gandhi laid down in his book hind swaraj was it is swaraj when we learn to rule ourselves so maintaining a discipline in our life is a primary objective in order to attain or to develop a kind of uh, uh, freedom or a liberation so for that we should have one self respect then there should be kind of self responsibility and self realization should be there now what are the constraints that are seen in the process of freedom among the constraints we have the external domination so let's say in india it was the british rule and so on and so forth so that's a kind of external domination that's a constraint to the freedom that exists for a common people then you have any external control that's there so let's say the invasion of alexander so or any other external control that's seen on to your territory is one of the major constraints within the society you have the social inequalities that exist in the form of caste system or casteism then by the government there are certain laws for example in south africa there was the law for apartheid so blacks were not allowed to go to specific colleges specific schools specific hospitals so that's by law or by rule so sometimes it's the government that promotes or constrains the freedom of an individual so four constraints that we need to understand under the constraints for freedom and that's what we discussed right now now coming on to the idea that was laid down by netaji subhash chand bose subhash chand bose basically talked about freedom is not just freedom in the society absence of constraints uh, expanding creativity or capability as we discussed so far but according to him freedom was a kind of all round development of an individual it talks about equal distribution of wealth abolishing the caste system abolishing social inequalities destroying uh, destroying the existing communalism that is there and any kind of religious intolerance now if there is a constraint so four constraints we talked about one by the government then the external forces the social inequalities so why we need these constraints so sometimes we say these constraints are good these constraints are good because there could be a scenario where there is disagreement and there is a conflict and when there is a conflict what would happen you would have the disagreements that could be seen for example uh, if you are moving on the road and there is a road rage that occurs so that's one kind of disagreement that's seen on the other hand there is a parking area people can fight over the parking area people can fight over the land issues so those are some of the disagreements or open conflicts that are seen then once you have these open conflicts there should be a kind of mechanism to control those so let's say police or government intervention would be there similarly you would have a kind of violence or a dispute that is being controlled the society is willing to respect the differences that exist the legal and the political restraints are also important to understand here and law sometimes helps to avoid any kind of harassment in the society so those are some of the constraints established by law by rule of law or by the government that's important in order for the freedom to 
function smoothly and that's what we understand here now there is one another important term that's liberalism what is liberalism liberalism is identified as a tolerance and it's a kind of value that's within an individual now when you have uh, it's basically more of individual centric so each individual has a different tolerance limit let's say uh, you are living in a house studying and your neighbor is playing a loud music so there could be two cases one person could be tolerant to that loud music the other person might not be that tolerant to that loud music so that's the level of tolerance that an individual has and therefore we say liberalism is highly individual centric and the rights to hold or the right of a person to express their opinions or to agree and disagree with something is totally independent and individualistic in nature so some can be happy with it some cannot be happy with it however we have to give priority to the existing individual liberties that are there and based on that we have to move forward so let's say there are two views on that the historical view says we are favoring a kind of free market and minimum role of the state However, the modern view on liberalism states that we are a kind of welfare state and we reduce all kind of social economic inequalities that exist into the society. The next important principle is the harm principle laid down by J.S. Mill in his book on liberty. Now, J.S. Mill in his book on liberty tried to address three important issues. First was the limit, the competence and the consequences of the imposition now under this harm principle he said that the sole idea or the sole end for which the mankind is basically warranted is the interference with the liberty and this is brought by self-protection so he said that power can be exercised only when the members of a civilized society are against the will to prevent the harm to the other so i am working not to harm to not to harm anyone else so preventing the harm to the others is what is uh, the idea that was laid down in his book on liberty and this was laid down under the concept of harm principle he explained two kind of uh, explanations for this one was self-regarding action the other was other regarding action self-regarding action means the consequences for which the individual is responsible so state has nothing to interfere with it and it's only and only i am responsible for something that i am doing to someone else the other regarding action talks about the external interference so it talks about the role of the state and the consequences for the others that would be seen because of my action so the action is being taken by me but the consequences is being faced by someone else who is present in the society and that's what is other regarding action self-regarding action is the consequences is only for me i am doing the action and the consequences are for me and it's for nobody else so that's the two ideas that he tried to explain then he he said this harm caused under the harm principle can be serious or cannot be serious so for the small harms or the minor harms he said a social disapproval is a common thing as we talked about in the previous example of let's say a neighbor playing a loud music so there could be a social disapproval people like more sorry people might not be happy with such a kind of neighbor who is not listening to them and continuously playing a loud music so that's a social disapproval but for major harms you have a government intervention or the rule of law that comes into and there could be kind of penalties that could be imposed or legal actions that could be taken so people should be ready to be tolerant should be ready to be tolerant at a certain level and only when it goes beyond that level you would have the law or the legal procedures that should interfere so we should have a habit of uh, basically trying to work around not imposing the restrictions but to have a kind of idea towards freedom a positive attitude towards freedom so there are two terms that we commonly come across in freedom one is positive freedom the other is negative freedom positive freedom says there is absence of any kind of external interference so there is no external interference that is seen 
So let's say India is independent, we are an independent uh, entity and there is no external constraint that is seen and it's a kind of policy of non-interference that is seen. So this is freedom from, so there is nothing else that is trying to dictate you and you have freedom from external factors that are there and that's what is a negative freedom. So under this you could do, be or become whatever you wish to be. So you can do, be or become whatever you wish to be and the idea is non-interference as we primarily said. However, when it comes to positive freedom, it's expansion of the opportunities that are present to express your own self. So Ruse, Marx, Gandhi were all, all kind of proponents for a positive freedom. Positive freedom talks about freedom too. So it talks about freedom to an individual, providing basic healthcare facilities, basic uh, quality of living, basic standards of living, uh, driving people out of the poverty. So that's all a kind of positive freedom. We are trying to expand our opportunities for our self uh, existence that's seen. And it basically tries to make a society or a kind of develop an individual. So that's what is positive. So negative freedom, positive freedom, very, very important concepts to understand. The next important thing is freedom of expression. This is a very interesting concept again. So we talked about J.S. Mill's concept of harm principle. We talked about his book on liberty. In his book on liberty, he talked about freedom of expression. When he tried to explain this freedom of expression, his idea was the minimum non-interference policy or the negative freedom that was there. So he gave or laid down four principles. The first principle was no idea is completely false. It's not practically possible for any idea to be completely false. What appears false to us must have a truth behind. So that's a very conceptual or a kind of philosophical construct that Mill tried to lay down. That whatever is appearing false to us must have something that is true behind it. So that was the first idea that was laid down by him. The second reason why he said there is freedom of expression is he said the truth does not emerge from itself. There has to be a kind of conflict. In order to resolve that conflict, this truth came up. So truth is not a kind of result or does not emerge by itself. It's only after a conflict is there, you have the truth that emerges. Now, this conflict is valuable not just in the past but also for the future or for the coming days. The next important point he said that is we cannot be sure that what we consider true is actually true because what a society is trying to do is it is trying to suppress the ideas that are not acceptable. So whatever we feel is not acceptable to us, we'll suppress that idea and we'll promote only those ideas that the society feels is acceptable. So therefore, this is a very important point to understand that we cannot be sure that what we consider true is actually true because it has been promoted in the lieu that it is acceptable in the society. So those four reasons to express the freedom of expression given by Mill are really really important to understand. Then he talked about sometimes what happens is the things are banned off since they are not acceptable in the society. A good example was Deepa Mehta. Deepa Mehta is a writer and she basically tried, film writer and she basically tried to write on the plight of the widows in Varanasi. But this was objected because Varanasi was pictured, is pictured as a kind of historic town and uh, this would bring down the image of Varanasi. So the release of this movie was basically, or the release of this idea was basically curbed down. So sometimes this happens that there are constraints that are put up in order to make the things much more acceptable in the society. So, <coughs> sorry. So that's really, really important to understand. Now Voltaire in his statement explained that I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to death your right to say it. So that's something that tries to bring out what Mill was trying to explain during his time. Similar to the Deepa Mehta's work, there are other works and plays that have been banned after the protests that have come up in the society. But, uh, for example, the Ramayana retold by Menon and so on and so forth. Now, the idea is once you bring in a ban, 
it is good for short term because immediately what's happening is you are trying to stop that practice however for long term this becomes a practice and therefore it's harmful to the society in long term what would happen is uh, there would be censorship and finally what would happen is any such kind of idea that's trying to be promoted would be curbed down without giving it an extra thought so ban is good for short term or immediate response but in long long term it brings on or brings on much more constraints into the society Similarly, an uh, interesting example is the England's royal household. So anyone who is employed in the England's royal household is not allowed to share the details of the royal household or the internal affairs of the household outside even when they leave the job. So they cannot interview, they cannot write, they cannot author a book. So that's a kind of constraint or a contract that is being signed by the royal household of England. So that's again where you are trying to impose the restrictions onto the freedom. So those uh, constraints, how they are existence, in, uh, how do they exist into the society? They exist because of social reasons, they exist because of religious reasons, economic reasons or the interference of the state. So those are some of the primary reasons because of which constraints exist into the society and therefore what in summary we can understand from this chapter is freedom is important to make choices. We are trying to get rid of the constraints. In the same time, we are trying to develop creativity and capability. We are trying to expand on that area. The next is we are trying to have a reasoned explanation for the behavior that we are doing. We are trying to take up more responsibilities through education and providing a kind of uh, positive judgment into an individual mi individual's mind. So that's the basic summary of this chapter. We would be talking about more such topics in the coming lectures. So we'll continue with our class 11th political science. Stay tuned. Have a great day ahead.